Hey guys! So today I'm making my video on axolotls. I've had people ask me about this video for a long time now, so I'm gonna go ahead and finally get it done. It is storming really bad outside right now, and my lights keep going off for like two seconds and then coming back on. So um, I'm really hoping that that doesn't happen while I'm filming and that the electricity doesn't go like permanently out because I would like to not film in the dark, and if that happens, I probably won't upload the video because I don't want to film a video in the dark. So I hope that just doesn't ruin my video. You know, that'd be nice. It'd be nice to get through this video without it being ruined. So here's hoping that I will make it through this video. If you are watching this video, obviously I did. So yay. Okay, let's get started on axolotls. Before I um, start telling you the things that you need for an axolotl, um, let's talk about what an axolotl is. That's actually a question I get a lot. I have people asking me, you know, is it a fish? Is it a lizard? What the heck is that thing that you have that is in the water? Can't really see him right now because he is right there hiding out in this camera sucks. Axolotls are in the salamander family. So basically, if you don't know much about salamanders, they kind of go through the same metamorphosis as a frog does. They start out as tadpoles that live only in the water, and then they metamorphosize and turn into a land animal. Basically, an axolotl is a tadpole of a salamander. But the difference between the regular salamander tadpole and the axolotl is that the tadpole will metamorphosize and turn into a salamander, and the axolotl never will metamorphosize. So basically a tadpole of a salamander is also known as a water dog and if you look at water dogs They do look exactly like axolotls. So with axolotls, like I said, they never metamorphosize and they stay axolotls all their life Giving them their own species. Axolotls were indigenous only to one lake in Mexico That is where they come from. Now axolotls are pretty much extinct now in the wild due to global warming and human construction Things like that. The lake was no longer very sustainable for life for axolotls. Now, was found that axolotls do thrive in captivity, so axolotls as a whole aren't almost extinct, just in the wild. But now that you know what an axolotl is, you can learn how to take care of it. Axolotls are fully aquatic, they will never leave the water ever in their life. So this means no, you can't pick it up, you can't play with it, you can't hold it. If you sterilize your hands, you can put your hand in the water and like touch it, but you don't really want to do that much because they do have a slime coat and it can be damaged from excessive touching. They don't really like it that much. So I would leave touching to a very minimum. I will, you know, sometimes pick him up when I take a picture and he'll rest in my hand. But even that, I only do that for like a few seconds and I'm like, okay, I'll let you go because I know you ain't loving that. So if you want an animal you can handle and touch and hold, this is not the animal for you. Yes, you can interact with it, but not the same way you would interact with an animal that you can hold and touch and love and all that stuff. You have to love it from afar. Axolotls come from a lake, like I said, in Mexico that is actually very, very cold. This is where they thrive. They don't survive in hot water so what you will have to do for your axolotl is always keep the water under 70 degrees they really do best in temperatures 66 and lower so axolotls need really cold water to survive which means if you live in a really warm state you have to understand that you might potentially have to buy a chiller chillers are not cheap they're probably one of the most stupidly expensive things I've ever seen and I am avoiding buying one at all cost I don't want to pay 200 or more dollars to cool my water. Now, to help with keeping the water cold, what I do is I have a fan on top. It's not on right now in this moment because when I'm making this video, I don't want that on because it's very loud. So I would definitely say that no matter where you live, unless it's like Antarctica or something, you're gonna want to have a fan. First thing I would invest in with an axolotl is a fan. And of course, um, you're gonna need a tank. For one axolotl, it can live in a 10 gallon tank minimum. I recommend a little bigger than that. I think a 20 long is a perfect size tank for one adult axolotl and if you ever want to get a second you can fit it in a 20 long as well. You don't want to get a 20 gallon tall tank because axolotls really like a lot of floor space rather than height. Second thing is axolotls don't really like light. Right now I have the slide on just so y'all could see the tank in the video but normally it is always off. Next thing we need to talk about is filtration. Filtration is super, super important for an axolotl tank because axolotl tanks are basically waste machines. They go to the restroom a lot. The hard part about this is axolotls like very still water. When the water starts flowing too much, they get stressed and they won't live very long because when they're stressed, they get diseases and they aren't healthy, etc, etc. So basically you want a filter that is going to clean very well, but also not make the water move too much because filters tend to, when they circulate the water, move the water. I've actually had a lot of success with usable filters. Now, um, if I show y'all real fast, 
going to switch to my phone real fast. Um, this will just give you an idea of what you should look for in a filter. Basically, in a filter, you're going to want something that has that has an adjustable flow level. Right here, you just can turn it and it'll increase and decrease the flow. Once a month, you will need to replace all the packets in there. After a month, they don't work as well, so you have to replace them once a month. And here, I have my fan. There we go, now it's working. And as you can see, it is very loud. That is just the price I pay for a happy axolotl. So there are a few more things you need to take into consideration for an axolotl. One of them is the gravel or substrate on the ground. This is a very, very important part of axolotl keeping because if you were to go to the store and get regular aquarium sand or aquarium gravel, it is actually very dangerous for axolotls. They have a tendency to nip at the ground when they're trying to eat and they will often accidentally eat the sand and gravel. I'm using very, very, very fine sand. And now this is a very perfectly safe alternative. A lot of people will leave their tanks bare bottomed, which means nothing at all on the bottom. This is both good and bad. It is good because you can see exactly where the mess is, clean it up and keep the tank very clean and not risk the axolotl eating any kind of gravel or substrate. But it's also bad because the axolotl sometimes will become stressed that it cannot grip onto anything on the ground because it is just glass. So I found a good alternative which is very, very, very fine sand. This kind of sand will safely pass through the digestive tract and not hurt the axolotl. It is this, it's super natural. It's by Carib Sea and this color is like Tahitian black and I don't know if they make many colors but it is black so that is what I recommend for gravel but when it comes to feeding axolotls you will learn very quickly that you cannot own an axolotl if you are squeamish I don't really eat fish food or anything like that the absolute best food and staple diet for a axolotl is earthworms um, specifically night crawlers they are very big Canadian worm. So if you are not okay with chopping up a live worm and putting it in the water, don't own an axolotl because earthworms are the absolute best food for them. They can eat it every single day all their life and live super happy and good. So I'm now going to film how to feed an axolotl. If you don't want to see an earthworm get chopped up, you can go ahead and skip. Just, you know, skip over it. It shouldn't take longer than a minute, so just skip a minute of this or 30 seconds of it and the feeding should be over. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna first get a cup and put some water in it. It doesn't have to be that much, just enough for the earthworm to go in it. So earthworms are very large. It's kind of startling to people who don't like worms, but obviously I don't mind them. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get a worm and put it in your, oh, I dropped the worm. He is free. You're going to put the worm, I can pick him up, use my hands so oh, man I'm gonna have to use my hands you're gonna get the worm and you're gonna put him in the cup if I could ever get him in the cup there we go he's in the cup if you just made a mess like I did you're going to clean it up if you don't want your room to have worm poop and worm dirt all over it so you're gonna get your worm and you're gonna cut it the worm and you just cut him worms can't feel pain so he's okay google it like I did I googled it like 80 times to make sure it was true worms can't feel pain he's okay it's just you know in like 10 pieces now So that is how you feed an axolotl. I do that every single night. Now, another question people ask me sometimes is what fish can I keep with my axolotl? The answer is very, very simple. The answer is nothing. He will eat shrimp, he will eat snails, and any fish that he can fit in his mouth will become dinner, and any fish he can't keep in his mouth is likely to pick on his gills, pick on him, or just stress him out because it is in his territory. So yeah, I would have to insist on never getting fish for your axolotl tank. When it comes to cleaning and maintenance, I spot clean his cage anytime I see poop. But once a week, I do a big clean. In about once a week, I take out about 15% of the water, I clean out the bottom, make sure there's no poop. Then I will dump out the water, fill it up with cold water, and get a water conditioner, condition the water, put it in there, add some ice to keep it cold, and then I'm clean. That's done, that's done. And that's just the basics for axolotl keeping. When it comes to what to do when your axolotl gets sick, if it's not eating, all of that fun stuff, I'm going to make another video about axolotl care and what to do with a sick axolotl. I'm not exactly positive what my next video will be. I know that I want to make a video about betta fish care. I believe betta fish care is very overlooked and people don't realize how much they can really do for their betta that would benefit it. So I will make a video about that. I'm not sure if that's my next video or not, but look out for it. So thank you for watching. Bye. Do you want to show the world what you did? Show them your butt. Show them your butt. Show them.
This is Phoenix. Um, while I was sleeping one night, he decided to make a huge noise, wake me up, and when I checked his cage, he threw his tail. Unlike other kinds of geckos, crested geckos will never grow their tail back. So he will have a nubby butt for a life. Did you know I love you? Do you care at all? Okay. Bye.